Hi, in this video, we'll look at KMS clustering. So let's say we are given n data points x1, x2, up to xn, and each of these data points belong to let's say l dimensional space. And in this l dimensional space, let's say when l is equal to 2, so let's say data points are distributed like this in this two dimensional space. And we can see we can create two clusters here. And goal of KMS algorithm is to identify these two clusters automatically. So KMS clustering does is it identifies K centers where K is equal to number of clusters. In this case, K is also equal to two since we have two clusters. So these k centers, let's call these centers as mu1, mu2 to mu k. And these also belong to RL. So here mu1 can be this and mu2 can be this. And what it does is it assumes that each of the data point x belonging to the set of all the data points will be assigned to one of the k centers and data points assigned to same center belongs to the same cluster and it tries to find the centers in such a way such that distance of points from their allocated centers can be minimized. So let's say for a given center J let Xi be one of the points assigned to the center J then distance between the point Xi and center J is given by this. So this is the Euclidean distance and we would sum all the points i to which mu j is assigned so in this case this would calculate the sum of all these distances that i just marked if j is 1 for j is equal to 1, the sum of all these distances is a. If j is equal to 2, then it will calculate all these distances marked in blue. In fact, it will calculate the squares of these distances because in our expression we are not taking the square root. And let's say sum of the squares of all these distances marked in blue is b. So for j is equal to 2, we get b. For j is equal to 1, we get a, and what we'll minimize is a plus b, is that we have to minimize. So we have to find our centers such that, so this would calculate distances for all the points which are assigned to center j. And you have to calculate this distance for all the centers, so j is equal to 1, 2, k and i is equal to 1 to n so you have n data points and k centers and you have to minimize this expression let me denote this expression as cost function c so we have to minimize this cost so we minimize this cost through an iterative process 
and the first part of the iterative process is assume so the algorithm initializes by initializing some centers mu1 mu2 mu k so once this is initialized we assume that mu1 mu2 mu k are fixed and we find the optimal assignments of data points x1 to xn to one of these centers. So this cost function can also be written as sigma j is equal to 1 to k sigma i is equal to 1 to n a i j x i minus mu j square so this a i j would be 1 only if x i is assigned to center j otherwise it would be 0 so we can write this in this form so the first step in iterative process is to assume that our centers are fixed and we have to find the optimal assignment so we have to find the optimal AIJs because AIJ decides that uh, to which center J should the data point I be assigned and we can see that to minimize this cost function we can note that assign AIJ to nearest center because for the data point I, I either we can include xi minus mu1 square to our cost or we can include xi minus mu2 square to the cost expression here or we can so on and we can or we can add xi minus mu k square to the to our cost expression and since we have choice that we can assign i data point to any of the centers and we want to minimize the cost so we will choose the center for which this expression is minimum that is we choose the center for which the distance of point xi to that center j is minimum so aij is nothing but simply based upon the closest center to point i so we can say that aij is equal to 1 if j is equal to s otherwise a i j is equal to 0 where s is the closest center to point i so s is equal to argmin s dash x i minus mu of s dash square so s would take the value of center which is closest to point i and if j is equal to that center then aij is 1 otherwise aij is 0. So the first step is easy. In the next step we assume that aij is fixed that is assignment to the centers is fixed and we have to reassign or find new centers mu1 mu2 to mu k so we have to reassign these centers and we have to assume that aij is given that we already know that ith data point is assigned to which of the centers so to minimize this we can look at the cost function which is sigma j is equal to 1 to k sigma i is equal to 1 to n 
aij xi minus mu j whole square and to calculate the value of mu j belonging to the set here we take the derivative of c with respect to let's say we are trying to find the value of mu p where mu p belongs to this set so we take the derivative with respect to mu p and we can see that mu p will only appear for the data points which are closest to p so basically this would be sigma i is equal to 1 to n del by del mu p so for all the points which are assigned to center p xi minus mu p square plus sigma j is equal to 1 to k and j is not equal to p because j is equal to p has already become covered sigma i is equal to 1 to n aij xi minus mu j whole square now this expression here does not contain mu p at all partial derivative of this expression with respect to mu p would be 0. The partial derivative of this expression with respect to mu p is something we, which we have to calculate now. So we can write this as del by del mu p sigma i is equal to 1 to n a i p x i minus mu p transpose into x i minus mu p. So which is nothing but gradient respect to mu p of xi transpose xi minus xi transpose mu p minus mu p transpose xi plus mu p transpose mu p aip sigma as we do n to n so this would be equal to sigma i is equal to 1 to n aip now derivative of this with respect to mu p would be 0 and derivative of these with respect to mu p would be simply xi so this would become minus 2 times xi and derivative of this with respect to mu p would be 2 times mu p plus 2 times mu p and to find the minimum value we put it equal to 0 because we want to find the mu p for which the cost is minimized and this would give us sigma a i p x i from i to 1 to n divided by sigma a i p from i is equal to 1 to n mu p is equal to this so we get this expression and if you carefully look at this expression you can note that a i p refers to all the data points which are assigned to center p or you can say which are in cluster p so basically this expression says that add all the points which are in cluster P and divided by the total number of points which are in cluster P. 
so this is basically the average of all the points which are in cluster p so we can write this as average of all the points in cluster p so this is nothing but sigma i i is assigned to p xi 2 r by total number of points which are assigned to p and let me denote it by np so this is our second step and we loop through the second step and the first step again and again until we reach a convergence so let's quickly recap first step is assign mu1 mu2 mu k and usually you can assign these by looking at the high level clusters so there are various initialization techniques so instead of assign i would say initialize then the second step is calculate aij that is assignments considering mu's are fixed so basically assign every point to nearest cluster center okay and third step is update cluster centers where pth cluster center is updated by taking average of all the xis which were assigned to p in step 2 and after calculating the new cluster centers we again calculate the new assignment and we keep on looping through step 2 and step 3 until we converge so this is the k-means algorithm i hope you like this video see you in next video